Okay, so my name's Warren, and I was born in the mid-90s. When I was young, I got into Doctor Who. I think it was the More Than 30 Years in the TARDIS documentary. I saw it on TV. I just loved all the monsters. When I was younger, I didn't actually have the internet for a while, so on a Saturday, I used to go to the library, and I used to just research different things I was into. So I was researching Doctor Who, and I think it was just through Google Images, finding all these spin-off films, so seeing like the Auton trilogy and I was just immediately drawn to the the monsters and I was really confused because obviously it wasn't official BBC but then it wasn't a fan production um obviously because you know it's been commercially released um and I was fascinated by these films so I think I got hold of them through Galaxy 4 um and I just love them I, I'm not a huge fan of the aud the audio format um so I haven't been drawn as much to like big finish but I love the fact that these were proper films, and I see most of them I see as canon. Uh, and I'm not really a fan of fan films at all, um, ones that aren't official. But I see that BBV in real time, I see them as both adjacent to the main Doctor universe. Um, and then a few years ago, I really got into BB. Well, I got into Doctor Who again quite obsessively a few years ago. Um, and by then, things like the Probe films have been released on DVD, so I got to catch up on. The films that I didn't see as a kid um, and yeah I just f fell in love with these films really. Together types they used to call them. Really? Yeah together types a good word that. I much prefer the old words like um, together types, dirigible, submersible, wireless. Wireless no. There's a word to conjure with me. <laughs> in some ways I prefer them to the new that? series especially yeah, with BBV you can she there's less dead. limits you can break the fourth wall with you know the the comedy is like do you have a license to save this planet just really really interesting films and they're so diverse as well hello it's for you tell me how you kind of make contact with me um stalking you on social media <laughs> um I was kind of looking up a few Doctor Who stars, um, and that's one reason that I'm kind of drawn to spin-offs and the Doctor Who world as well, because it's it's fairly easy to connect with a lot of these kind of directors and actors. If I did a um, like a, a drawing of Spider-Man, like Kevin Feige from Marvel is probably never going to see it, and Tom Holland's probably never going to see it, but in the Doctor Who world, there's certain cases where you can kind of get your fan art you can get the actual actors or the actual um, directors to see them. So I found Bill Baggs on social media and um, I kind of was sending him these different drawings that I've done. Um, and he was um, really, really supportive, um, made some really nice comments about it. And that's really encouraging. Like, I don't do it for feedback or anything, but it's really, really lovely when, when that happens. So I did some real-time art. Um, and that was the first, I think it's called rotoscoping this technique, uh, which is just tracing over photographs, but then allowing allowing you to customise it as well. I did some real-time stuff, and then I really wanted to do a BBV one. Um, and the first I one I drew was the Zygon artwork. So I did the Zygon DVD, well, the second Zygon DVD cover, I think. But I extended the body a bit, just using reference photos of Zygons. Then I drew Giles from Probe When to Die. Um, and then the Auton, and I've very recently I've just drawn the Auton Nesting Sphere and the Daffodil as well. So I'm trying to map out the BBV universe like, obsessively. Um, obviously not not every single character, but um, I've got a list of about 25 different uh, like drawings, ideas. Um, the chunk of them are BBV. So why did you choose Giles out of interest? Because he's awesome. Uh, I think I think it's good because it. Um, it's tributing BBV, obviously, because it's yourself, and um, it's, I think it's instantly recognisable to fans, and then it brings it up to date with the latest film, When to Die. Probe's now in some books by Arc Beetle, or, or will be coming out soon, and I, I've traced their logo, the new Probe logo, and I put it on Giles' jacket, and it was a little bit of a joke to, you know, when the unit headquarters has, like, unit secret base on a big sign in front 
of the building um, that it you know it should be more covert, but it's not. So it's it a in my head it was like a tribute to that. Um, my dream would be um, to do an animation, the kind of flash animation style that's in the when they reanimate the um, missing episodes. If anyone out there is interested in working on a fan animation, it's something I'd, I'd love to do. How did you get from artwork to figurines? I became really interested in making figures that don't exist already or aren't commercially available. So I made some real-time models. Like I made the uh, clay sculpture of the gargoyle from Deimos Rising. And then I wanted to make some BBV ones. Some of them I haven't made myself. Um, I was on a Cybermen group on um, on social media and I saw someone had made a Cybron figure. And that was a chap called James Lee who I met um, at the SIL premiere um, in November last year. Um, and he custom printed a Cybron figure. And I was absolutely blown away by it. So I messaged, messaged him and said, you know, I'd love to buy one. Absolutely love this. Um, and he actually improved the design, improved the body and the shape of it. Um, and that's how I've got the side run. Um, and then he took the character options figure of the Foot Doctor. So the character options figure of the Seventh Doctor made it into a Foot Doctor. Um, and he also made the uh, console of the, the Shropodist as well. Um, so I made the in memory loan robot out of paper. I don't. I think I was going to ask James to commission it, but then I was like, I might as well just have a go making it out of paper. Um, it's not amazingly accurate, but I thought it was really fun. And if anyone did want to make their own one, it's super easy to to print their own and, and fold it. Um, but I do plan to improve the design to make it slightly more accurate. Um, and then I've made a crinoid, but all it was, it was a fake plant. Uh, and I just pulled the leaves off and it looked like a cool, cool crinoid. Uh, so that was a bit lazy one, that was really easy. Um, and then I made the ape man from More Than a Messiah. Uh, that was really easy to make. I had a Planet of the Apes figure already. Um, I think I was I was watching the film and then I saw the ape, the ape person and then I was thinking, I've got that Planet of the Apes figure and then the costume looked fairly easy to make. So I looked around the house looking for the that sort of material that... Um, sort of like the potato sack kind of material and I think I found like a bag for life and just cut a square out of it and yeah I think that one's quite effective I added some toy fire that I had from a, a Marvel toy um, I think that one looks pretty cool and then coincidentally ages ago someone gave me a shell um, just randomly and it was like the perfect shell to paint green for the the shell that's in more than, more than a messiah so yeah I just painted that green I think that looks really effective as well that little shell My favourite one is definitely the Devil of Winterborn, um, and I think it probably doesn't sound good, but I'm a big fan of like the Satanism kind of genre. Uh, one of my favourite films, and like to do with like cults, and I love films where it involves like a satanic cult where you're not sure if it is it supernatural or is it just the power of the cult. Um, and so I was really really drawn to that one. And so something like the Zero the Zero Imperative, I enjoy that as a spin off. Like, I enjoy seeing Sylvester McCoy um, being an evil doctor. I love, but I, I kind of just enjoy that ma mainly for the references and for the who aspect of it. Like, I love the, the newspaper with Inferno and the Brigadier on it. That's that's awesome. Um, but with The Devil of Winterborn, I, I was hooked. Like, on that final act, I was literally on the edge of my seat. Um, really, really enjoyed that one. Um, I love Cybron as well. Um, I, I love them all for different reasons. I love the first, and you see the, the, the last three Stranger films. Again, I haven't s seen those for a while since I was a kid. But the, the first three Stranger films, I absolutely love um, as well. That's just a moment. Life isn't black and white, you know. You don't either love or hate. I think you did a really, really good job of, of pushing that character, uh, his his performance. But I think the one that yeah, the one that stands out is definitely The Devil of Winterborn. But I love Auton. Um, I love how slick it is, and and the Autons are an awesome creature already. But you, I think you've made them, um, you made them more badass than, you know, that anyone could have expected. But I love the religious scenes in Auton too. I find those really really powerful. I think that should have been pushed. And I love um, the Air Zone solution as well. Um, and I think if Arnie scenes were pushed a little bit more, if his psyche was pushed a bit more, I think it would. Being, I think it is a masterpiece already, but I think if 
if his scenes were pushed more, I think it would have really stood out as an absolute masterpiece. But I'd say my favourite one of them all, even though I, I love them all for different reasons, but my favourite one is The Devil of Winterbourne. I just think I, as a piece, I think it just works really, really well. And and I was genuinely, like I said, I was genuinely gripped and I almost forgot about the spin-off genre and I was just gripped as a film. I actually recommended it to a family member as well who's not a Doctor Who fan at all, um, who's just a fan of um, kind of like murder mysteries and they thoroughly enjoyed it as well. They said it, and I think it was, it was edited really well as well because I didn't read any spoilers. So there's one scene where you think it's... Um, the way it's edited, you're not quite sure who's kind of the culprit. The one whose dog gets killed at the start, I think it's, it's edited where I, th I felt she was the cult member, and then obviously it isn't, and yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one. Very good. Well, listen, it's good to talk to you. One last question. Yeah. Um, you, were talk you talked about your discovery, discovering real time at BBB. Why would you recommend, why do you, do you think people should watch BBB spin-offs? The reason I think people should check out BBV spin-offs in particular, this if you're a bit disappointed by the new series, I know a lot of fans are, there's a whole world of films out there which isn't that well known, which can be enjoyed. And if you want that classic vibe, a lot of the films have that classic vibe and they have obviously the classic stars, um, but they push things in different areas that the series can't, in more adult themes, uh, and there's no limits like the TV series has. Um, and they're so diverse as well. So I think, yeah, if, you, if you're if you a fan of Dot 2 in particular um, and the new series isn't doing it for you or you're after other things as well, and if you're not a huge fan of the audio format, I think there's a whole world of films that are worth checking out. 